Developing indigenous leaders is very important in today's world, in today's society, especially you know, when we're talking about making a change, making a difference, and talking about closing the gap, especially in the education and health department. You know, that's where indigenous leaders come in. Indigenous leaders know what's best for our own people so that we can make a difference and that we can tackle the situations that we face and the situations that bring us apart from today's society. My name is Bujamala Balluni Mambale Mungubayana and I'm from Burktown in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Yeah, there's a lot of diversity with landscapes around Burktown, like you got nice green out here, you go to the salt pans and it's just all um, flat and dry except when there's king tides it gets a bit wet so you won't get out there. Um, Burktown is small so you know everyone and everyone's friends and it's also close to bush so you can go fishing, camping, hunting. Motivating the kids is really we don't have a, an option here. Um, it's not like, you know, uh, you get up in the morning and you're saying, you know, you have to get dressed and go to school, that's just down the road or you have to catch the bus to the school. The only way they're going to get to further their education is to go away to boarding school. It is, it's very hard because you, you are setting them off as little kids. They've got to learn to be adults in quite a short time. For me, when I think of leadership, I think of somebody that's a role model to others that somebody looks up to, someone with a lot of dignity and a lot of integrity. When I hear the word leadership, I think of a role like a captain or someone in charge. They do a lot for like the community where they come from and I hope I can do that one day too. The um, RYLP scholarship was very good. It helped me travel to different unis across the country. When I was growing up I never really seen any indigenous dentists you know around. The closest dentist is Mount Isa and that's a six hour drive but even there there's no indigenous dentist. Dental health and oral hygiene is just as an important aspect of health as anything else so if I can help make my people understand that and make them feel safe and secure in coming to the dentist that'll be a big plus for me. When you look around um, at a lot of the communities nowadays and you see a lot of the disadvantages and a lot of the issues that go on in there you know we're, we're constantly thinking of that and at the same time trying to teach our kids that you know there's, there's a different way of life, this, you can go out there, you can achieve what you want to achieve, you can be better than what's here right in front of you now, that's not what you have to put up with. There's so many opportunities out there and that's, you know, that's the main thing that you know, we want to get across to our children is that, you know, the sky's the limit, you can do whatever you want, you know, and, it, and that's why education's the key to that, for them to be able to achieve those things. My drive and ambition mainly comes from my family. I've got a lot of younger brothers, sisters, cousins, and I want them to all look up to me one day and think, wow, if he can do that, I can do that, and I can do more. Even though I'm in the big city, you know, studying dentistry at JCU in Cairns, I still know who I am. I'm still connected to my family, to my culture, and to my country especially. Um, and you just always know when it's time to come home. We learn culture by listening to elders, following the uncles, the fathers, their everyday role in the community, their leadership skills. We learn culture from them. They show us everything. When I hear the word leadership, it's role model, inspiration, and people you look up to. I got this scholarship when I was at grade eight, and it helped me, and now after that, I want to go to uni finish uni and get another scholarship then when I'm something I want to say that like this scholarship helped me and how it made me be a more mature young indigenous woman. It doesn't matter where we come from or how remote we are, we can go and do something, make a stand and see that indigenous people are just as well as non-indigenous people. From uni she's talking about you know positions that we've never talked about and you know she, once they should talk about being a politician. One of the things I'd like to see is leaders 
pushing for the Torres Strait. And um, if you don't have an understanding of concerns of your people or, or what is impacting on the Torres Strait Islanders, you know, individuals' lives every day, you, you wouldn't have an idea what you're talking about. Don't let nobody tell you you can do something. Keep your heads up high. Just do things that you think that people would not think that she ever did it before. The role models in our community are those who have been there for us. You know, the things they have done for us and the experiences they've had, they've shared with us. And going away from home with their stories, it gives us the confidence and courage to step out and to do what we have to do to live in this society today that we live in. And it's a very good thing that the knowledge that we share is handed down from generation to generation which empowers all of us, young and old, to move forward together as one. Mount Isa is a uh, vibrant community, um, diverse community. Um, there's a lot of challenges, uh, both uh, education is very important. Uh, we have to have an understanding of um, of how people operate in our community, both the Indigenous community and the non-Indigenous community. My hope for the future of Mount Isa is that our younger people, our young Indigenous people, will go out into our community and be leaders in our community. One of the highest statistics is the suicide rate in young children and Indigenous children in Mount Isa and that's just something that we really need to focus on and change for the better. Being a leader is being trustworthy and honest and being wholehearted and helping anyone you can. A leader can be anyone really, like you don't have to be awarded a leader, everyone's a leader pretty much in helping the community, like our elders are leaders as they help us understand our culture, I just want to be different, stand out and make the right choices for our people. There are so many negative stereotypes about young black people, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in the community and to have strong young leaders being developed and, and breaking down those stereotypes and breaking down those barriers is really important. It gives hope for the next, you know, for the older generation to see that there's young leaders coming up and will will pave the way, you know, I think that's a great thing. Being exposed to, to, to strong leaders already, he wants to emulate that and be like them and be that for the next generation. So, you know, and, be, and have that pride in being a black fella because he just, he just thinks it's deadly. <laughs> I don't see a lot of people getting around talking their language that much, um, but it would be good if, like, it is really important as this is Calcutta country. If I want to go and get something, I'll go and get it. I won't wait for it to come to me. If I don't like it the way it is, I'll do it all over again. For Moya to go into university, that's like a dream come true. Taking uh, the family to that to that next step, strive for bigger and better things. So I've I've got a trade myself, so that you know that next step up is is university because then that's going to open up so many doors, in, in, in increasing the, uh, the the status of Indigenous people in, in, in the whole community and, and what what's capable given opportunities. There is a health issue in Manisa with especially Indigenous people, and I'm like I'm really from our community in the Northern Territory, my pops, and I'd like to take knowledge back to there as well to help with sick and elderly people. Seeing the very um, the limited opportunities that they had in the past compared to the opportunities that we have now and being taught many different things where we get to learn a lot more compared to what was taught in the past, I think it's a very good opportunity for us. We just, we live in a world today where where it is so modernised that we are trying to balance two worlds. You know, our identity that we are still trying to express to the wider community, to the world and to the nation here in Australia. And also trying to maintain that balance between Indigenous and non-Indigenous culture alike. NPA itself is it's, it's contained of um, five communities, three Aboriginal communities and two island communities, and which is Ingenu, Aboriginal community, um, New Magico and New Mapoon, and the two island communities, Isaysia and Bamiga. One thing about leadership, as you know, we are a full-born Indigenous council. Each community's got their own council and we've got an um, Indigenous mayor. 
So the um, importance of leadership is, is getting our mob into these positions. It's not about trying to run a community, it's about the other jobs, the CEOs, but in, in the health system, nurses, um, doctors, teachers, and it's about our mob fixing up our mob. Being a leader is a tough job, and I believe that we should encourage young people, young indigenous Australians, to move forward. Me being the second eldest in my family, I have to be a leader to my younger sibling. And I also want them to see the future for them. I want them to be a leader for their, their children and their friends. My role model would be my brother, my eldest brother, because he finished school and now he's working hard. Yeah, that's where I like to be. I develop leadership skills in acting like a role model and helping people whenever they need help. The person that is inspirational to me is Beryl Friday because she's just helped like people with netball and girls, like Indigenous girls, just like have a dream. Yeah, my mum always taught me that education is the key, so I could use my education to get pretty far. Hi, my name is Daniel Nanja. I'm from Palm Island here, but I go to school at St. Teresa's of Gary. I describe Palm Island as um, a lovely place and a lovely country. When I finish school and I go to uni, start focusing on how the animals adapt to their environment. When I finish uni, come over here, do the police academy, and be a police. A good leader would be like someone who like give you the right um, help and you're doing the wrong thing, you say, no, just come and do what I do. Think about leadership, education, then deadly, good example, be a great leader, and all the wonderful things. Leadership's really important because I'm a role model for other students, younger students. This scholarship has funded um, World Youth Day for me, three weeks in Europe, so that's a big life experience that um, the scholarship has helped, with, helped me with. Well, some of the challenges we face here on farm, just as any other community, but because we're so isolated and, you know, um, just the boredom, students get very bored. They don't have very many activities to do. And I think going out of boarding school, that'll give them a lot of opportunity to experience new things. Well, they see themselves as setting up for failure, but we'd like to see them succeed. Possibly, you know, try and get into uni, and, or try and enter in a trade in some, some workplace, and then come back and share their skills. That way, you know, not only to keep the community connection strong, but to keep the family ties strong, and encourage their own families to go out and try something new. We need to look at it our way too on the island within the community that we've got to stick together and focus together that we've got to get these kids at least graduating and then on to college you know or university. Really my vision for our children not just my children I've had three older one four graduate I lost one and one to go that I'm still trying to focus on school but my vision for this community is to get all our teenagers finishing school then out to uni and going further afield, because we're from Palm Island, you know, we're stuck with that most violent place in the world. So as soon as that kids get angry or whatever, that social stigma is there, it's, the, you know, labelled across their forehead. So, and everyone will have a go at them. And, and sure, most of these kids grew up with violence of some kind. It's when, they, it's when people out there make a statement and it really turns them off and they're back to square one that they tend to come back to community. But they've got to be stronger and more focused and have that support. Because our generation are going to be our leaders within our community is what I want to see for our future, especially the future of Palm. We, the young generation, can make a difference and can do something for a good common cause. To close the gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people, we need to make a stand and do something.